Hey guys, how's it going? I want to give it the context or interpretation for Matthew chapter 5 verse 43. And um, I'm going to read through the whole section here, verse 43 through 48. Um, so I'll just begin with that. And the section is called, Love Your Enemies. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor, and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same. And if ye you salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Okay. So, talking about loving your enemy. Okay. And I'm sorry if I've already messed up, because this... I'm really talking about, um, <laughs> let me see here, okay, it's really verse 44 that I want to focus on where he says, love your enemies, so uh, it just, this section starts at verse 43, it's really about verse 44, but it's about the whole thing in context here, so it's interesting, at the beginning of it he says, you have heard that it has been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy." It's like, well, did God say to hate your enemy in the Old Testament? Well, I was looking at the commentary, and here is what, uh, let's see here. Here's what Albert Barnes has to say about this verse. And uh, he says, the command to love your neighbor was the law of God, Leviticus 19, verse 18. That we must therefore hate our enemy was an inference drawn from it by the Jews. They supposed that if we loved one, we must, of course, hate the other. They were total strangers to that great special law of religion which requires us to love both. Okay, so it's not that God said to hate your enemy. That's what the Jews inferred. And... Uh, you know, Jesus came to reveal some things, to straighten some things out. And so we're supposed to love our enemy. And I like what Kaufman says about this. The principle of loving one's enemies is valid and binding upon all who would follow Christ. There is no room in the Christian heart, purged from sin and forgiven of all transgressions, to entertain such a stifling and chilling a thing as hatred for anyone. Anyone, and that's really what this is about that we are to love everyone. Love in this place does not necessarily refer to sentimental and affectionate love as one has for members of his own family. The kind of love meant is the love manifested by God himself and that he sends rain on the just and unjust, etc. The implication is that the Christian shall treat his enemies with fairness and equity, doing unto them as he would desire people should do unto himself. And so, um, let's see here. Let's go back. And so that's when it's saying, you know, um, that God makes the sun to rise on the evil and the good and it's in the rain on the just and the unjust. Um, you know, there's no partiality with God. And, uh, and there shouldn't be <coughs> with us either towards other people whether they're saved or they're lost and um, and then he goes on and says if you love them which love you what reward have you you know how are we any different from lost people if we only love those who love us that's what really separates uh, Christians from the lost you know in our way of living is that you know we have love um, <clears throat> the love that comes from God you know uh, that God set an example for us and, you know, and I want to say, you know, he says, he means to love everyone. And he says, love your enemies specifically, because if Jesus said, you know, love everyone, then someone's like, okay, uh, I'm, you know, I'm fine with that. But hey, Lord, uh, I'm not going to love that person because that person hurt me. 
you know, that person did some really, really bad things to me, and I can never forgive or love that person. And Jesus says, no, love that person, no matter what. Um, love your enemies. Love everybody without partiality. And, uh, you know, treat people as you want to be treated. And, you know, we're supposed to be kind and merciful. And this has been a subject that's been on my mind for a while since I've been reading through First John, because there's just a whole lot in that whole epistle about uh, the love of God and how, you know, uh, whoever hates his brother is, you know, not of God, basically. And um, so hates, uh, hating individuals is not supposed to be a part of you know, a Christian's life. And it's also been brought up recently. Uh, it's been on my mind because I've seen things that Steven Anderson's put out there. Um, you know, and of course there's... Um, the Westboro Baptist Church and all that stuff. You know, there's people that claim the name of Christ, but then they try to justify their hatred, and they'll use the impeccatory prayers or whatever. Uh, but we're not to hate anybody, and uh, we're commanded to love your enemies. And that's that's all that we need to know, is that uh, Christ commanded us to love everybody. And, you know, and for some reason when it comes to the subject of homosexuality, you know, there's... You know, some Christians want to treat other, or lost people as less than human, you know, basically. And, you know, especially homosexuals, uh, but, but any lost people, you know. And uh, it's something that we struggle with, you know, even though we're saved, you know, but the Holy Spirit is to help us and to guide us to forgive and to love others. And so, you know, that doesn't mean that we're accepting of their sin or, you know, that we have to trust them necessarily, but we should treat them, you know, as we want to be treated. And, um, you know, like I've told other brothers and sisters, if, you know, there's some circumstances where a lost person, you know, needs our help or something, we should help them. You know, whatever, just like we would, you know, save brother or sister, you know, we don't... Uh, uh, we're supposed to love all people equally. And that's the point. That's why he says love your enemies. Because uh, the enemy would be the last person that you would want to give your love. You know, that you would want to forgive and have mercy and kindness towards. Because they hurt you. You know, there's a reason why they're your enemy. Um, but it's very interesting. And, and I think this is, the more that I've studied it, it's like I feel like this is really kind of like the highest thing about being a Christian is, you know, that it's all about love. And uh, there's a lot of people out there who claim the name of Christ that have hatred in their hearts, and it's not good. Uh, you know, and it's stuff that I've struggled with, even after I've been saved. You know, I've gotten very angry at people and, and thought and said things that I shouldn't have, and I've asked for forgiveness for that. I prayed about it. I didn't feel good about it. You no. Know? But... Uh, it was worse when I was lost, for sure. I would dwell on getting revenge and stuff like that. Uh, anyways, remember that we gotta love everybody, folks. And, uh, you know, we gotta keep our hearts soft towards people and not become hard hearted towards our brothers. So, thank you, and I'd like to hear your comments, and God bless.